Okay, now I'm going to start marking it. Um, how you mark things is also a bit dependent on your fabric. Um, some things work better on some fabrics. For this black, however, I will use my tailored chalk, which should be perfect. If you would be using um, this pattern a loads of times, or even just a number of times, it would make a lot of sense to cut it out on a, uh, a slightly thicker material instead of this flimsy paper. That will make it easier to um, mark it. It also means you'll have less, you'll need less weights to keep it down properly. However, we'll just do it for once now. So I'm just gonna use the paper and just be careful when you mark it to not move the paper and to not move the fabric under the paper. Take your time. Marking it is important, and if you get good marker, it should be easy. The one that I'm using is not perfect. For some reason, I'm not really happy with it, but it does the job. If we lift this. Actually, I'll just move this for a second there. You see that it's clearly marked. You can mark um, the fit line if you want to, but I personally see no point. Um, when sewing, I'll show you how to make sure you don't mess up the seam allowance. Okay, I'm going to do all of this now. It's going to be a bit boring, so just shut off the camera. Okay, I've marked the first set of uh, pattern pieces. Uh, let's have a look at what I did right and what I did wrong. This is part A. Um, just gonna move that to the side there and you can see that it's nicely marked on the uh, fabric. I also marked the pleat line here all the way to the top and I've put a mark here for the side piece which is this piece, um, piece C, which actually will go here later. This will form the pocket and just quickly put that on there um, where the where it should go so matching the side of our pattern piece there and there and then I've just quickly traced the outline of that piece on the fabric so that later when I'm constructing the front pocket I have an idea of where that should go because since this corner is missing we can't really align it with that corner so that's just you know something that I find useful this piece actually came from here. You can see it's uh, neatly lined up there. We've got this piece here, piece G, as I've marked in my horrible handwriting. Then we've got the back block. Let's get rid of that for a moment. The back block, as you can see, once again, I've marked the pleat line in it and the outline. One important remark here regarding this dart. This dart is marked in a thick line on the pattern. Why? Because you have to cut it out of the paper pattern. However, do not cut this out of your fabric because then you're in real trouble. Okay? When we cut fabric, we're going to cut straight. So I've put a light cross over there to remind me to not cut down to there because this is going to be a pleat. Okay? It's going to be like that. So we don't want that. And then finally, we've got our waistband here. Part F, cut on the fold, and I've marked the center front, which is also marked on the pattern. I've transferred that marking on um, this pattern piece for the waistband. Now, if you've been paying attention carefully, you may have noticed that I actually made a mistake here, because I've marked this fly piece, right? But the, the, the fabric is double, so we got an identical, well, actually a mirrored piece of all of these on the other side when we're gonna cut. And this, when we put this on our trousers, if I put this like, Floomp, it's gonna be the right leg, so actually there's no point in marking the fly piece on the right leg because the fly piece actually goes on the left leg. So I'll have to mark this on the other piece and here it's actually not serving any purpose at all. So that goes to show that I'm really not very good at all of this. Now, this is where you might wanna put a picture up, take a picture and put it online to impress your friends because this looks really good, you know? It's like this guy knows what I'm doing. This guy knows what he's doing. Um, or a girl, whereas actually we haven't done anything yet that requires any skill. So it's looking good and 
you know, next step we're going to do is we're going to cut this out. Let's do that. To cut out our fabric, once again, we have different options. Um, some people prefer like a rotary cutting tool that you roll over the fabric on a cutting mat to cut the fabric. Um, I don't know if they're any good because I've never used them. I hear good things about them and it's been on my to-do list to get me one of them uh, for a while now, but I'm just going to be using what I always use, which are these big ass scissors that I got from friends of mine who brought them from India. They're pretty kick ass. I have cut out different pattern pieces. I flipped over the fabric both um, layers together and I'm now transferring the marks on the pattern to the other side. This is the pleat line. This doesn't have to be super accurate. The idea is that we'll know where the zip goes when we're putting it in, more or less. There we go. I managed not to, um, this is the other piece, I managed not to cut out this dart, so that's success. Make no mistakes, these are two, you see? So you got all pattern pieces double, I transferred the letters, it's all clear, we're done here, and we're gonna start cutting out the pieces that require a different treatment. Okay, part D, this fly piece, needs to be cut out twice, but not mirrors of each other. We actually need two copies like that. Now, we don't want to mark on the good side of the fabric, so what we're going to do is we're going to flip it over. I'm going to mark it this way. One's here, and one's there. The only thing we have to take care of is to make sure it's on grain. I'm going to put this on the fold line. Uh, sorry, I'm going to put this on, make sure this is on grain. And fold it out like that. Put, it, put some weight on it. Draw around it, do exactly the same thing here. Draw around it, cut out so that I've got two um, copies. Let's do that now. There you go, we got part, um, part D, the fly piece, outlined twice, so time to put this bad girl to work. There you go, that's two times part D, I've labeled it at the back, and these are ready to go.